Welcome to Good Mythical More. Man, do we have some beefs with peeps. And we gotta squash them today. Your elbow okay? I saw you got hit by the wheel. I got hit by the wheel. Daddy I'm like, fine. Daddy don't like Oh, here we start go. Start with something. Daddy like colors. Daddy don't like processed beef. Daddy like rainbows. Daddy don't like dull wood. Daddy like alternate endings. Daddy don't like VHS. Daddy like director's cuts. Daddy don't like hot lights. Daddy like cake cuts. Daddy don't like, oh now you're just looking at things tight shoes. Daddy like, mm, oh. mm, that sound. Daddy don't like tight pants. Daddy like f rockets. <laughs> Daddy don't like, mm. you just give up? See, you gave up, I got it. I'm not gonna play the mm, game. <laughs> Daddy like that sound. Uh, that was smart, it was, Daddy a, like, it was a nice mm, pivot. The only reason I gave you credit is sound. because you, you, you pivoted, it was a good audible. Cut your beefcake, beefcake. Yeah. Huh. It's funny, the wheel hit you, but my shoulder's hurt. <laughs> yeah. Right, it's just getting your shoulder's been hurt for a yes. couple of months now. Oh, it's been hurt for 10 years. It's just, it's, it, it was always like n very subtle, and now it's like, I gotta go. It was get always like, mm. what are you gonna do? Uh, I, I need an MRI. You know where I can get oh. one? In, one of, in the machine. You have to get in the machine, I think. Right? Wow, this is thick. I yeah. was gonna ask you if you wanted to hear fictional scenarios about you guys getting into beefs with other people so that you could fictionally solve okay. those beefs, because that's right. what's about to happen. I'm more comfortable that this is hypothetical, but I'm gonna, it's gonna feel real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it. Okay. You are slinging pins at a bowling alley, not literally, when you get a little too overexcited, Rhett accidentally throws his ball into the next lane where a group of very serious adult bowlers are engaged in a thrilling match. Is it called a match? Uh, yeah. He's seriously thrown off Larry's game, and Larry is not a good sport to begin with. How do you squash the beef? Hey, 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 hey! Usually when like there's like a potential altercation, I think that's a good way to start. Hey, 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 Larry. But, but this that is a prize? That doesn't really work. I'm the winner? Usually. Larry. It was an accident, Larry. I think, you, I think, Red, this is on you, man. You're the one who threw the, yeah, eat it. Oh, what's that crunchy thing? Did you eat one of the alien nipples? Look, when this was set down, we were informed that, uh, Trevor wanted us to understand that this is an alien nipple. Are you chewing the... The BB, you should do it. Really? You gotta work your teeth out every once in a while. It's like going to the gym. Take one of those dollops. It's gonna feel like it's not gonna give, but then you just gotta go through and you gotta, and it's gotta give. I mean, it, it does look like a BB. What, what's the scenario? You, you are bowling you threw your and you bowling threw your ball yeah. into the other into the adjacent lane where they were having a serious match. And, and Larry's, Larry's upset. mad about oh, it. Oh gosh. Yeah, he's about to get into it with you and you need to quell the situation. Larry, look at what, what is that? Turns around, run. <laughs> that doesn't squash the beef. Um well, I, I my technique and I don't get into a lot of beefs. My technique is to immediately diffuse by facial expression and like like body language. And I'm like, oh man, I'm so hey, Blair, Blair, I'm so I, dude, I'm so sorry. Can I got? Can I buy you a drink? You look like you could use a no. You look like you could use a drink. Do you but, want a drink? Because you're so large, you know. It's like just the walk up. It's like people are like, okay. Am I gonna remain aggressive with a guy as large as you? You have that, that's an advantage that you have. You know? Yeah, but if I also... walk up to somebody, I mean, I'm not short, and there's nothing wrong with being short. I'm just saying I'm not. Okay. I'm just an average height guy. Maybe even a little bit taller than average. I'm a, I, th I think I might, odds are I'll be a little bit taller. 
But I mean, look at my, look at my hair and how my head bobbles. It's like when yeah. I'm walking up to you, you're like, oh, I'm I'm going for this guy's jugular. You think it's just the height, huh? So I, I I do think it's a factor that then when you're like, oh, and he's, is this gonna be ugly? But then it's like, hey, Larry, can I buy you a drink? You never said, can I buy you a drink? Well, okay, can I also point out here, if you're talking about Larry the bowler and his group of bowling friends, like you've gotta take into consideration how Larry views you more than the height issue. Like. Cause there's a gang of them? Well, it's also like, I mean, I'm making certain assumptions about Larry and his uh, group of friends, He's but short. they they probably would make fun of you a little bit. Make fun you of know? me. Both they, of you. What would they think about me behind behind his back? Is my not, hair yeah. in a man bun or not in this scenario? I mean, either way, either way. Ha! Either okay. way, she says. Okay. What kind of judgments do you think Larry's friends would make? It's about not. Me with it's my not hair about like what. This? I'm I'm saying. What like, would they assume about me, Stevie? <laughs> I mean, they would assume that neither one of you is in a bowling league. Well, uh, that would be true. But they would also assume you probably put the your bowling ball in their lane on purpose. On purpose, because we're screwing around. Yeah. A couple of oh. You know, this this does remind me of the episode we did where we got people to get their their. We got wasn't it that we got mythical beasts. Yeah, on uh, relatives to give their first impression of us based on one photo. Oh yeah, exactly. And I was like the gay neighbor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd yeah. like to do that again. I'd like to, I'd like to get people's first impressions. Right. Of us, just based on looks alone. Let's do that again. Um. Yeah. So I don't know. I understand. I understand where you're coming from with that, and I think that my strategy is typically to achieve the uh, apologetic posture that they're hoping to get out of you by hum humiliating you, right? I can't, I can't even say that word. Um, and avoid, I don't, I just, I've never been punched in the face and I feel like I've done a pretty good job at avoiding that. I don't know how he's never been punched in the face. <laughs> and I've been there for many times when somebody should have. Um, because my instinct is to be aggressive if I feel like I've been wronged, I get, you go to 11 very, very quickly. Yeah, not as much as I used to. I've mellowed, but in the past. Okay, okay, so for this scenario, you'd be as apologetic as possible, maybe offer Larry a drink. That makes yeah. sense. Uh, hey, and I would be like, dude. A whole round for the boys. I'd be like, dude, it was obviously an accident. And I would probably would say that in defense of you. I'd be like, it was an accident, man. Just Reset your pins. Let's forget this ever uh -oh. happened. It's like yeah. oh, no. you're overreacting. Oh, no, no. And it would make it worse. Right. Yeah. But I that mean, would be my instinct. It might be true, but it wouldn't help. It wouldn't help, but it would feel good for a second. Mm, it would feel a lot worse. And I don't really, happened. I don't think straight when I get in that zone. So I say things that don't make sense. Well, like keep in mind, you also like, have to continue bowling next to th this guy for yeah, the yeah, rest yeah. of your I, match. I wouldn't have thought about that either. <laughs> Let's match is scenario. match right? Match can't be right. Is that what you call it? I think it's just a match. game. Yeah. I'm thinking about that story of where Set? I was at the gas station with somebody and they were they like pulled around me and did something like Oh yeah. And then I blew the horn at them as they were l exiting. It was kind of like a coward play. I was like, get out of here as they were already leaving. And then he like pulled a U, he came back in yeah. and then uh cursed me out in front of my entire family. Across your wife, though. Yeah. From the passenger seat, across Christy. Got, Christy rolled her window down, and then he's yelling across her at me. She was it was, she was blocking a lot of it. It was, I, I told that story on Ear Biscuits a long time ago. But she didn't, but she let it happen. I can't bring myself to listen to it. She let it happen. She wasn't gonna be like, I'm gonna step in. And he, this is a, he made his bed, I'm gonna just sit here and watch it happen. I think the most famous story though is the, what are you thinking? When uh, right. we were on the beach in Florida and there were these like college students playing football and Christy who was very pregnant at the time un unwittingly walked through their football, beach football game and then this guy was trying to catch a ball and hit Christy. Never saw her. Never saw her 
knocked her over and I saw it all happen and like sprinted over there huffing and puffing and was like got in the guy's face and I was like it's a college, what do you think? He got into a college student's face. What do you think? He was 30 at the time. <laughs> he was well, like right, right, I, right, I didn't right. see her and she was kind of like uh, in the middle of our football match. Okay, well, let don't me do it again. You, I'll give you a more realistic scenario here. You're both running with scissors. Yep. Um, and you you're, you accidentally trip and you clip off some dude's rat tail that he's been growing for 10 years. That's a long rat tail. And uh, he, he I guess he turns to you and he swears that you'll have bad luck for seven years because uh, you're beefing with him now. Uh, what, what do you do? I mean, you... I would say, sir... The events that conspired in the universe to lead to this moment in which me and my buddy here are running with scissors, <laughs> and you with a 10-year-old rat tail happen to be in the way of us falling and snipping it's completely cosmic. unintentionally. Yeah. The universe wanted you to get rid of your rat tail, yeah. and but we were just the messenger. So don't come at us, come at the universe. Right, yeah, you're gonna have to fight the cosmos, man. <laughs> yeah. We're not your problem. I would actually feel pretty bad, and I, w it would, I would know that it would clearly be my fault. So I think in that one, I don't think I would go into, you know, like lizard brain. But you also have a pair of scissors. What's he got? He has a dangling rat tail that he's holding in his hand. <laughs> What's he gonna right. do, whip you to death? <laughs> Okay, naturally we're moving from rat tail to this scenario. You're sitting down to a delicious turkey dinner with Jeffrey Bezos. <laughs> he insists you must try his homemade gravy. Rhett eagerly grabs for the gravy boat when his greasy fingers drop the gravy boat. It's been in Jeff's family for four generations, even surviving a large house fire. What? <laughs> Jeffrey is livid and tells you you'll never receive a package on time again. Ooh. How do you squash the beef? Well, this is uh, this is tough because gravy boat breakage. a man who has that much money, monetary things are no longer of any value to him. It's, mm -hmm. Things have to find value other ways, and sentimental value is one of the only ways that you can appreciate things when you're super super rich like him. So I just feel like I would just strip naked before him, <laughs> <laughs> lay out, and say, Jeff. Do with me what you will. And just see what Jeff Bezos would do to a naked me. <laughs> Chase is correct. Chase is clapping. <laughs> correct. You are correct. That is that, that is the answer that we were looking for. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, am I wrong? I think, <laughs> I think you're right. Okay. Grab your copy of Blood Oath, Rhett and Link uh, versus the Global Lovemaking Crisis. I'll grab my copy. It's, it's got a story as crazy as that one you just heard. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's an ad for a Wiener Toaster 6000 on the back. Uh -huh. That gives you any idea of what's on the yep. inside. Yep. All right, this is the latest quarterly collectible item. It's only available to Mythic Society members, so... Uh, you can join third degree quarterly or annual by March 31st or before to be able to get your copy. Otherwise, if you're not already a That's third it. degree member, it's like you're not, you're not gonna get that collectible. Yeah. Very proud of it, mythicalsociety.com. Okay, this one is has got me perplexed in a number of ways because one, you're at Staples. <laughs> we're at Staples, we're, mean, we're, we're looking for a new mouse. No, you are you're buying a new computer monitor. Okay. And yeah. you decide to mess around with the copier and you copy a bunch of uh I guess pictures of your butts. Yeah. Um okay. we've but pictures we, of your butts. We've actually done that. But this part the I don't think school? you've done. Yeah, um, we did we, we did some copies of our butts and our faces. I definitely remember that we and you I don't think I ever if put you're gonna copy your butt and your there. face, you wanna copy your face first. Yeah. Then copy your butt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You actually, you actually both want to copy your, your face first, and then both copy yeah, your, your face, butt. face, butt, butt. Right. Um, you want to be the first butt guy if you can. You would really want to be the first face guy too. Right. Unfortunately, I think, I think the real question we were trying to answer is: Can you photocopy a fart? 
And the answer was no. Yeah, right. We thought it might have like a ghost-like quality. <laughs> right. It's like there's an aura. There's an aura of the f- two men capture fart on copier. <laughs> Like, we wouldn't be here right now, man. We'd be with Bezos. We'd be eating gravy with Bezos if we had captured a fart back in the 90s. Yeah. That's Nobel Peace Prize material. Uh, I think it's just Nobel Prize. Okay. You copied... <laughs> I mean, of course, that would bring world peace. Right. So, you're all right. Your butts. And then, unfortunately, your order and the San Francisco 49ers orders are swapped. Because I guess you, the, after you copy your butts, you have to place an order f- for them. I don't know. The 49ers, huh? Then, okay. yeah. Then uh, you get a bunch of invites for a pasta party and sleepover. Because I guess that's what the 49ers were going to do. It, it and sounds then, like trying to hear a story and follow it from like a preschool or an ADHD yeah. or something. Yeah. Like that. And then the 49ers get photos of your butts, and I guess they're upset about it. So then how do you they squash be. that beef? I kind of, I don't mind if the 49ers have a problem with me. I'm a, think, I'm a Rams fan. I think you got to lean into it, though. I think you've got to, like, do something humorous to, like, get them laughing. Like, you know, take out a billboard that has our butts across it, like, my two cheeks and your two cheeks, and then it's, it's like, yeah. Maybe it's forty nine cheeks, and it's like, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The it's re- like an apology bill. I think it just says the real forty ers and it's just forty nine cheeks. Who gets between us? Who gets the one extra half cheek? Because it's twenty four sets up until that forty ninth, and then we got to pick it. Pick a cheek. Right, right. You know what? We get a NFL umpire to flip a coin for us. I said umpire. <laughs> yeah, an NFL umpire. <laughs> yeah, right. Because right. in this scenario, things don't make sense. Referee. Correct. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Correct. Okay, and finally, another realistic scenario. You're throwing a party and you've invited the Kool-Aid man. But after having a few too many cups of sugar on the way, he arrives at the wrong address and crashes through your neighbor's wall. Faced with the neighbor's fury, the Kool-Aid man's only defense is, oh, no. And you have to resolve uh, the beef. How do you resolve the beef? Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't, know. I don't know what my motive is here. Like, you know, it's like, hey, he went to the wrong house. He's an idiot. It's like, yeah, but you invited him. Um, to my house, yeah. <laughs> right, but it wouldn't have happened without your instigation. You know what, let's just trade houses. This is what I wanted anyway. Why did I want this? Why did I want the Kool-Aid man to bust through my house? Is this like a, a cheaper way to demolish, a, you know, to add on an addition? Well, you wanted an open floor plan. Right. Open to the outside. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, let's just swap houses. Uh, I think it depends on the pre-existing relationship with your neighbor. You got... I got some. You good. got you've got good neighbors. Like you, you guys have like little parties with each other and stuff. Yep. yep. My neighbors not not so close. I'm actually closer to your neighbors than you are. Like Christy, Christy worked out at the gym with one of your neighbors. Boy, she had some things to say about you. Yeah. Well, we keep the windows open. The stench wafts <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's exactly the what McLaughlin I mean. stench. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the McLaughlins haven't bathed again. <laughs> mm, I hate them. Yeah, it's. I feel like it's a rare thing to have um, neighbors that you that you that you like to talk to. In California, it it, it definitely is. It, it's not like it was growing up on you know Lynch Avenue and Bowie's Creek, where you were just basically, you know, there's like seven houses on it, and so you you, you know everybody. You need some sugar? Did you run out of flour? Well, if you go and ask somebody for flour in California, they're like, is this a drug deal? Right. You know? Yeah. Like, what Suspicious. Are you, what are you? No, no, no. They don't have, they have Suspicious. almond flour, maybe. They yeah, have... they just don't have real flour. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd be like, switch houses with my neighbor. I can't come up with a better answer than that. Yeah, because I is want correct? I want to preserve my relationship correct. with my neighbor. So be like, I, I'll cover the cost. I'm sorry. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. But then I'll make the Kool Aid man pay me. It's definitely his fault. The Kool Aid man will cover it. Join Third Degree Quarterly or Annual by March 31st to get Mythical's first ever comic book. Visit mythicalsociety.com for details.